The ability to pivot this table, for example, change row headings into column headings, gives the pivot table its name and makes it a powerful analytical tool in Excel. I'm going to show you two ways that you can take the raw data from this table and easily create a pivot table to better summarize our data. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time, my name is Mike and I'm a teacher who is all about accessible learning that helps you unlock new opportunities. And one way for you to unlock new opportunities is to impress potential employers or your current employer by learning how to create and modify information and pivot tables. One of my students even got hired right from her interview just by being able to define what a pivot table was. So let's start there. A pivot table is a spreadsheet feature that allows data tables to be arranged in many ways for different views of the same data. You can pivot from one view to another with ease. To start creating a pivot table, I'll click anywhere inside of the structured range, then I'll click the insert tab, and then click the pivot table icon. This opens up the pivot table dialog box. From inside of this create pivot table dialog box, we just have to check two things, and that is that we've got the right table or structured range, so just make sure that you've got all your numbers in there, and we do, so that's great. And then the second part is just deciding whether you want to put the pivot table on the existing worksheet or create a new worksheet. And for most of the time, you want to create a new worksheet so that you have more room to manipulate your data. So we're going to choose new worksheet and then press OK. Now you'll notice when this window pops up on the very right, the pivot table fields area, the fields are basically the columns from the original data table or the structured range. So these are the columns and then we can move these around to create new columns, new rows, uh, new values that we could either get the sum, the count or the average or the minimum maximum values from. And we can also add them as filters here. So typically fields with text or non-numeric data are placed in the rows area by default fields with numeric data get placed sort of automatically in the values field. So I'll give you an example. Let's do the amount. So if we click on the amount here, we'll just give it a checkbox. It puts it right in the values. The only problem with this is if you have something like in the sales ID, so I'll just click on that, that represents sort of an identification like a student ID number or a employee ID number. Those aren't really things we want to tabulate or get an average or sum from. So there another way to get these fields into uh, the table the way we want them to is to just kind of drag them uh, to where we want them to go. So let's say we want to see the total values of sales by sales ID. This is exactly what we want. And if that's all we wanted, um, you could just leave the pivot table like that. So it shows here that the there's different, there's uh, sales IDs one through five, and this is how much they make as a sum. Now let's say we want to add some more values to this pivot table. So within each sales ID, we want to see the total sales for each day now. So then we have to drag the day down to the rows. But if we put a check mark uh, there, it'll just go in the rows field automatically. And this is what that pivot table would look like. And to further that, we also want to see what the delivery services uh, and, and the totals for the delivery services as well after we see what the totals are for each day. So we'll just click on delivery services. That'll go into the rows as well. And then just kind of there's sort of a hierarchy there. So first we're going to get the sum of amount um, based on each uh, sales ID, then by the day, and then also by the uh, delivery service. So this is the cool part about pivot tables is that you can change the layout as much as you want. And let's say we're not really happy with how this looks. We kind of want a um, one of the fields to be in the columns section so we can kind of spread out our data and see it all in one concise table. But we don't want to have to scroll down uh, like we do right now. So the way we can fix that is we're going to move the delivery service field up to the column area and then just drop it there and see how that looks. So we dropped it there and this is how our new pivot table looks and this looks great because we don't have to kind of scroll down a long list of data. All of it's just contained right here in the pivot table. So we sort of have what we want in this pivot table. We have the sales ID grand totals and then we have within that we have the sales ID and how much uh, each one makes um, each day of the week. And then we also have the totals for each different delivery service. So that's kind of what we want, but we can take this a little further and add some color to our pivot table to make it stand out and then also change the look of our numbers as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to the design tab of the pivot table and then choose a color that suits us. So let's pick out a nice green. Maybe our company brand colors are green. So we're going to choose any kind of green here that stands out. I like this one. And we're going to leave it like that. And then also to further format the numbers, we can go to the values uh, square, 
just click on that little drop arrow. And then in the value field settings, we can change the, I don't want to leave this as the default, you know, sum of amount. Um, we could do something like totals. Okay, sales ID totals, things like that. Uh, you can give this a new custom name. You could also change the function if you wanted to get the average. And what's really cool is you could actually drag this same field down to the values field twice so you could get the sum of something but then you can also drag the amount down twice and get the average if you wanted to compare the two but for now we're just going to change the number format because we're dealing with currency the number format looks better if it's in uh, currency form so to do that we'd click here and then just click the uh, currency option and then we'll leave two decimal places and then uh, leave the formatting the other parts of the formatting as is and we'll just click ok and we'll click ok again and now this is what our numbers would look like within the pivot table. So as we analyze the data in this pivot table, we might want to show only a portion of the total data. And we can do this by filtering the pivot table. So filtering a field lets you focus on a subset of items in that field. And we want to move the sales ID and make it the main focus and just kind of focus on the subset or the um, sales ID one through five and just kind of filter um, that kind of information out. So the way you can do that is to drag the sales ID field right up to the filter. And now it's showing all of the sales ID. Now we can pick through here if we want to focus on a specific one or a number of them or all of them at the same time. You can also filter information further by using the row labels and column label filters. Let's say we want to take out the mean meals delivery service. That's not something we want to focus on. So we could take them out using the column labels filter. So we'll click on the drop arrow and then just take that out. So unselect it and then press OK and notice that this column is going to disappear. So a really cool way to filter out information in a pivot table is to create a slicer and a slicer is basically a remote control for different items within a field. I'll show you what that looks like. So when we click the pivot table analyze, we're going to go and click on the insert slicer and then we're going to choose the field where we want to create buttons from the different items in that field. So we still want to focus on the sales ID. So I'll click that one and then press OK. And I probably don't need all this room here. I could probably make this a little bit smaller and then move this up here. And then I'm also going to format it just like the table. So I'm going to have a little bit of consistency with the color. Uh, you can format it here. And I'll click uh, the green option. So notice that the sales ID, we're showing all of them. This is a really kind of neat way to filter out the sales ID, uh, the different numbers. So let's say we want to only show the sales ID number two. We could just click on that one just to focus in on that sales ID number. And then you could also hold, if you want to show multiple ones at the same time, you could hold control on your keyboard down, uh, click on the number, and then release the control key. And now we're showing sales IDs uh, two and three and we could do the same thing with four so again just hold down the control key on your keyboard click that one and uh, that's how you kind of just create like almost like a remote control uh, way to filter out information and you can create multiple ones based on different fields as well now I'm going to show you the quickest way to make a pivot table so let's say we want to take all of this information and we want to see which day of the week is the best seller for us so that's kind of what we want we're not sure how that's going to look uh, if you're not sure how your pivot table is going to look, you can just kind of use the recommended options. So I'm going to uh, put my insertion point within this structured range, go to the insert tab and click recommended pivot tables. And then from there, I'm going to look for something that says sum of amount by day. And you see right here, there's already a few um, options. So I can click this one and see what it looks like. And that's kind of what I want. So that's already kind of set up for us. So we don't really have to play around with the fields too much. Um, I just want to see the amounts uh, per day and the different delivery services and the grand total as well. So this is exactly what we want. So we can press OK. And then just kind of format it the same way that we did our other uh, pivot table and something like that. You could also add a slicer as well, doing the same steps as we did in the last pivot table. But this is just a really quick way to uh, pull up everything you want if it's in the preview of the recommended pivot table option. If you have any questions about pivot tables or you want me to add something to my next video about pivot tables, let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.